Right. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Lizzie Chambers and I am the prize coordinator for Hand and Lock. Um, I am going to take you through the submission process. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please drop them in the chat box and at the end, I will try and go through those for you. Okay. Let me share my screen. Bear with me, I am, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, I was just about to say, bear with me because I'm on a laptop that's not, I'm not used to. So you should be able to see the Hand and Lock uh, website. Can you see that at the moment? You may, yeah? Okay, so to get to the prize submission, we click over here to the prize. And then it's all over the website at the moment, but the easiest way is load your prize submission here. So we're gonna click on this. Let me just let these two people in. Okay. So for your online submission for 2024, we'll just go quickly through everything. Um, you will need four images of your work ready, already saved and saved in JPEGs. So we're hoping that the first image is going to be uh, your concept, your research and how your design has started. Uh, this can be a collage of images, uh, but please do not include text on it because uh, the judges are struggling to see the text that's being included. Uh, the second image will be samples, progress, and where you'd like to be heading. So this is kind of the middle bit of your story. Uh, then image three will be a close-up of your work, something you feel that's important for the judges to, to see. And the fourth piece will either be work in progress or your finished piece. Uh, with each of the images, uh, we will allow you to submit up to 200 words. And as I've put here on the website, there are no trick questions. The judges are just looking for words that are going to support your images and the direction of how you've taken your work in relation to the brief. So there are also submission guidelines uh, here as well. So we can have a quick look at these. So just to get you in tune with the website, it tells you about what's classed as fashion category. So a fashion piece uh, will be an entire garment that's been inspired by the piece. Um, you can go to town on board and embroidering, for example, a jacket or a top, and then you know, your bottom half doesn't have to have be a full embroidered piece, but it has to complete the look that you're trying to support. So don't feel like, oops, don't feel like you've got to um, make everything embroidered from top to toe. We're not looking at that. We're looking at the overall look of the piece you've created. Um, I'd also like to point out that it would need to fit on a size eight uh, mannequin. Don't go any smaller as it doesn't fit on the uh, models when they come and we do the photo shoot. And for a male, it needs to be a size medium. And again, don't go any smaller because it won't fit on the mannequins. For the textile art category, this can be anything that doesn't fit into the fashion category. So we're looking at 2D, 3D, jewellery, interior design, fashion accessories, art instalments. So basically anything that doesn't fit in the fashion category. Um, on the terms of the size list, because I quite often get asked what 
is the maximum size piece it's, it can be. As long as it fits through a standard doorway, a UK standard doorway, and we can fit it in the van and it can be transported to and from Hand and Lock and to the venue, then we are not worried about the size of it. So if you've gone big, as long as you can get it here and it can be transported from A to B, then that is fine. So let's go back to the upload your submission. So if I just show you the images, give it a second to load. So this is what I'm, can you see these images that have got uh, faces on? I think Terry was showing me that she could see. Terry, are you there? Can you see those? Yes. You can see the faces. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just checking. Um, so this would be an example of your research. So you can talk about where you're coming and where you're going on this. And then see if it goes. OK, it's not going to go the right way. Bear with me. And then this would be kind of your second image. So you can kind of see the work in progress. You can see an idea of where Sorrel's gone with this piece of work. Then as I was talking earlier, a work in progress. So, um, and then this one would be kind of a look at all the details. So you can do a really, you know, real close up of your stitching and your technique so that we can see what's going on. So when you show us the full piece, um, we get an idea of what your work is looking like at, at close up. Because the judges at this point are only going to see your work in a digital format. So it's not until you get picked are you going to, you know, have your work physically looked at by the judges. Oops. And then this is another example. So Emily was one of our... Um, uh, winners, well, finalists from last year. So this was her research. So she started with auras and, and colours and everything. And this was an idea of how her research uh, was, was kicking off. And then she went to uh, show you a sample. So let me just admit this person. So this is like a sample. So you can see the techniques that she's working on. And this is one of her details. So you can see how the details have been building up. And then this would be her final garment. So you can see the images that we're kind of looking at, and these are real examples from real finalists that have made their way through to the prize. Okay. So back to where we were. Let's upload our prize submission. So there are various points on here, which you can press the button. So this one here will take you along with this nice big one here. So let's use this one. So I am literally gonna fill in the form so that you all feel comfortable with uh, what's going on. So we want your first name, your last name, your email, oh, Let's just admit this person. Okay, and we are at score of the prize. Have I ever entered? Well, not myself, but I'm sure many of you have already entered before. Okay, 
So I'm going to enter with uh, Sorrel's work. So at the time she was a open category. Oops. And then she was textile art. Just didn't need this person here. Okay, if you are a student, we class students as anybody who's in full-time education at the time that you registered. Anybody that's outside of full-time education is classed as open. And as I mentioned earlier, textile art is all categories that are not a full fashion garment. If you are a student, uh, we would love it if you could fill in these details here. So university you've been to, your course leader and your email of your course tutor, because obviously we like to invite them to the prize uh, when you've got through as well. And sometimes when you finish university, uh, you're not always in contact with your tutor afterwards. We also like to give credit as well to the universities for all the students that have come through. So it's nice to reward the universities uh, for supporting you through their work as well. So this section here, is where you're going to fill in uh, the juicy bits that we want to see. So I am going to fill it in. This is what I've created before I've started. So the title of my piece is called The Layers of My Life. Oops, bear with me again. All right, and then we can stick this in here. And then our first image will be um, the one that I was showing you earlier. So we've got submission images. And that would be number one, which was the image with all the um, research on. We will drop in the text, which is this bit here. So I've already predetermined what I'm going to write so I don't sit here and stress because there's nothing worse than sitting and stressing about your work. So uh, while you're being creative, you can actually think about um, what's important, why, you're, why your stitches are important and how it's connecting to the brief. And obviously these three areas here, let me just get rid of that. These three areas here are why you're here. It's basically, you've got that opportunity to talk about your work. Right. Bear with me. I'm on a laptop that's doing its own thing. Oh, gosh. Bear with me. Sorry. I can't work the laptop. I'm so sorry, guys. Bear with me. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that I'm copying and pasting lots of different things. So let's go back to this. Okay, so we'll just copy and paste all the things in here. So as I was saying, use these boxes to describe what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you can do this while you're stitching. You don't have to wait until right at the last minute to think about what you're writing about. 
you could use like a dictaphone or something on your phone to kind of uh, record your thoughts while you're stitching so they are not paralyzed when it comes to this part as well. Um, it's also a good idea that if you've got a friend, um, you can talk to them about your work as well. And sometimes that helps um, to, you know, tell your story as well, because a lot of that comes out. When you come down to writing the text, it doesn't always work. So ignore the fact that I've put the same in every single box. I want you to put different words in those boxes because I just seem to not be able to use the laptop. Um, and then this last piece, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself. So potentially you could say, I'm an embroidery artist and I've been working on this piece for X amount of months. I was inspired by the brief to create it. And prior to uh, becoming an embroidery artist, I went to university and I gained my skills when I did my textile arts degree. Or you could say, I'm a hobbyist and I found the brief really inspiring this year. I've been stitching as a pastime for, you know, the last five years and I decided that I'd give it a go. We don't mind uh, your background or where you've come from, just that you're totally inspired by uh, the brief. Right, the next part is enter associate award categories. So this year we are super lucky uh, to have John and Sons Fabric Associate Award. So they're giving an award on the best use of fabric and materiality. So if you feel like you've used lots of different materials or used them in a really exciting way, uh, check yes for this one. That one's not a very difficult one um, to decide whether you're part of or not. The Royal School of Needlework, um, you need to be a student for this category. Uh, so that's the first hurdle we have to come over. So make a sip of water. The second part is uh, your submission must be hand embroidered and the uh, embellishments that you put on it uh, must not exceed 25% of your final design. The next one uh, that we're looking at is Wilcom Award. So Wilcom are digital embroidery. So if you are a student or you're in the open category, you can apply for this one. And if you've used digital embroidery in your design, then you can check this. This is for both the fashion and the textile arts category. The next one is the Worshipful Company of Broders Association Award. Uh, these ones, you must be a student for this category and 50% of your embroidery must be hand embroidery. So they have that open to accept a mix. And then the last one we have is the Worshipful Company of Golden Silver Wire Drawers with their Associate Award. Again, for just this year, um, it is a student category and you must have gold work uh, in your submission. Uh, the recommendation, it must be at least 25% and upwards that you've got gold work in there as part of your design. The more, the better. Okay. And then the last one is basically terms and conditions. Uh, you've got to confirm that the work is your own, that you're 18 and over, uh, that you've read the terms and conditions, which is basically the above, uh, that you're happy for hand and lock to use your submissions uh, for promotion, and that you're happy for hand and lock also to use your work on the social media as well. And then you press, press submit. And I realize that makes it sound really, really easy. I'm hoping all you're doing all the hard work, which is actually the embroidery. So are there any questions?
Okay, so Claire has asked, hello Lizzie, does the fashion category require accessories to complete the look or is the garment alone sufficient? So, um, if you're doing fashion category, it is just the garment that we're looking for. If you want to add accessories, then feel free. Um, they will be taken into consideration, but you don't need to. Terry has asked, uh, is a quarter scale creation considered textile art, uh, not fashion? That's correct, yes, because what we need to do is consider that if it's a fashion piece, it's got to be put on a adult uh, that's going to wear the garment for the photo shoot, else it's going to be classed as uh, a textile art. Um, the other thing is, if you've accidentally entered for the wrong category, then just send me an email so I can swap you over. Uh, somebody is asking, can we see the four photos again? Let me go back to that in a second. Are you supposed to complete all fields in the same section or can you upload the photos at different times? When you do submission, uh, everything needs to be done at the same time because it will come through to me as one document. So basically it will be, and I will need all the information we filled in at the beginning. I'll need the four images and your four lots of text. So as I advised earlier, pre-write your text out. Um, you can dictate this, like I was suggesting earlier, talk to a friend so that you've got all the words and information to hand, shove it all in a document and then cut and paste like I did earlier. Okay, there are some more messages. Bear with me. Uh, can you save the submission form and come back to it? Unfortunately not. So you need to have everything prepared and then uh, submit it all in one go. Is there a size limit to upload the JPEG photo? There is, but I doubt that you'll hit it because we've made it quite large. Um, I suggest Fiona that you create the JPEG and if it won't let you submit, um, then obviously reduce the photo size. But I believe it's like 10 megabytes, but you don't have to go that big at all. Uh, what size do images need to be in what format? Okay, so we prefer them to be square format and they need to be saved as JPEGs. If they're not JPEGs, they won't uh, be accepted. The form will, will basically say, please try to upload again. Uh, Christine, would it be wise to indicate the techniques used? Yes, if you're using anything special that's not obvious, when we talk about the details, uh, or your samples, you can talk about the techniques and why you've used them and what you're trying to create with your piece. So try and pop them in there. You don't have to go to town on how to's or anything. You can just name them uh, within your work. Uh, Ali is saying, also in regards to the final photo, my piece will still be very much work in progress by submission date. Oh, I can't see any more of that. It's not letting me up. No. Uh, can I send a drawing of the final piece, what it will look like alongside the piece as a point of submission? Yes, you can. Bear with me. So if your work is still work in progress, take a photo of where it's at, and you can also have the drawing uh, in one of those images of, of where you're going as well. So we've got an idea of what it will look like. There are several pieces that we've had over the years that have actually just been samples with drawings. And as long as it's extremely clear where it's going, then it's still a strong candidate. But please make sure your samples are strong or your work in progress is strong enough to show where it's going. Right, let me quickly show you again those photos. Okay.
Okay, so seem to have lots of those loaded. Bear with me. Okay. So this one is an example of your research. So you can have multiple images in here, but do not put text on it. Another thing is do not put your name on your images either. Uh, I will have to take those off because we are submitting anonymously this year, which is why your work will have a name to ensure that it's all fair across the board. So if you've entered multiple times and felt like you've not got anywhere, this is what I'm doing to create a, a level playing field for everybody. Uh, this is a suggestion of image number two. So work in progress. So you can see an idea of where your work is going, even if it's not complete. This is a suggestion of uh, your detailed work. So you can see the, the stitches and the colors and the layers, because we're all about the layers this year. And then this is a suggestion for your final piece. So we get an overall look of it. I also know that many of you have been asking me how to take photos of pieces that have got backs on them, if they're like 2D or 3D. You can potentially do that with the detail shot. So if you need to use a front and a back, you can put that in as your detailed shot, or you can have it so your item is kind of swizzled. So if you've got a garment, you're kind of swizzling around, so you see the front, it's like the front and the back at the same time as an option. Are there any other questions? Oh, Christine said, if I've understood correctly, is it possible to put a montage of several photos together on a single image? You can only do this for the first research one. We want single images for number two, three, and four on the basis that People have put too many collages together, which means that the images are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and we can't actually see the work that's getting sent to the judges. So we just want one big, clear, crisp image of your work in progress, one big, clear image of your detailed work, and one big, clear finish of either a second work in progress or your finished piece. Um, only the first one, which is your research board, uh, should be kind of a catalog of images. And please don't Photoshop a, um, a Pinterest board in because that just looks like you haven't technically, you know, done, done proper research. It just looks like a bit of a mess uh, and doesn't kind of showcase your thoughts properly. Lucia, if you've done several different samples, i.e. creating lace from a design and then on a fabric, do you do you image with all one sample or go the way I have chosen? Um, if your samples are all relevant to what you're creating, take a photo of all said samples together. If uh, you're taking your work in a particular way from learning from one particular sample and then that is your work, that's the sample that we want to see. The other ones uh, will be kind of a personal journey for yourself, but aren't going to support your prize work. Is there any more questions? I'll just give you a few moments for those that might be typing away madly. <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I think you might have asked me all the questions. Well, I thank you very much for joining me this afternoon and I hope that's been helpful. I will save this recording and it will be on YouTube later so that you can have a little look 
at things and review anything that I've said. Uh, if you've got any questions, then you can email me at uh, lizziechambers at handembroidery.com uh, um, or through the website at the prize. You're welcome, guys. You're all saying thank you. I love it. And I give you a massive good look um, as well for your work. And uh, good luck with your submissions. You have, I think, slightly less than a month now. So you've still got quite a lot of hours left, so don't stress. Um, oh, there are a couple of questions that popped in. Do this year's mentors look at the submissions? No, just the judges and myself that will look at the submissions. And I will pair up everybody that becomes a finalist with a mentor. We have 20 mentors this year and a really good mix of kind of textile arts through to fashion. And yes, if you need help after today, you can email me, like I said earlier, at lizziechambers at handembroidery.com. Anyway, right, good luck for you all. And I can't wait to see what you've submitted. See you soon. Bye.